You're not the worst mother in the world. No, I'm absolutely the worst mother in the world. It no, is, you're not. It is, no, it's it's official. I'm the worst mother. Right, you want to tell? No, I mean, Zoe's school got out half day on Thursday, why? and then Friday and, and Monday for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Why? Why? Why Thursday? Half I don't day. know why the half day. That one never made, was clear to me, but I. That wasn't clear to us. I didn't realize it until you picked up Zachy from school, and I went, "Oh!" And I checked the calendar. Went, they were out at ten to one. And I'm calling the school and I'm bawling and, and our receptionist is like the best woman ever. She's like, calm down, stop crying. And I'm like, She's how little... long has she been there? How long has she been there? She been... It's like, I'm the worst mother in the world. I go in there and I'm, this is how bad of a mother I am. I'm actually praying that there's other children in the office waiting for Have other scumbag parents like oh, me. Right, right, right. And so he was the only one. So essentially, I'm the only parent in our entire elementary oh. school who is so horrible that I forgot my daughter. So. Well, I am. I have to share blame. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, it is your fault. Mm -hmm. Why am I have to share so blame. Bad? I'll share blame with you. How would it? And I agree. You, you are the worst. No. We I are the worst parents. Parents, in the world. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. I'm so grateful she doesn't get shook by stuff like that, but I just feel so horrible. I know. So. With our change of schedule, and for what, 30 years, I have gotten up at 5.15 a.m. Hence this. I'm only 23. Uh, and now with our switch in schedule, I have the luxury of staying up late. You have never done that. Ever. Ever. And so on the days I don't have to deal with the kids in school and stuff, I plan it and I stay up late and then I get up late and it's been wonderful. And then we do the show and, and all that. The problem is, is that I tend to, when I'm cooking for kids and stuff, I don't tend to eat. I tend to kind of hover and like... You, a, you do that total Italian mother thing where you will not eat. You just have everybody else like eat, Even eat. on Thanksgiving oh, and, I know. and everything. Yeah. At some point you were going to have to sit down and consume food with us. So I thought I would share with you the reality of late at night when you get hungry, the reality of late night cooking. So in these times of stress and strife and people not working, I think Tell Me Something Good is even more important. By the way, if you haven't visited our Facebook page, Tell Me Something Good, it is all Tell Me Something Good. It's happy stories, nothing but happy, because there's sometimes you're like, I don't want any more reality in my life. I don't. You just need a little bubble of happiness and it's perfect. But this one is so cool. This guy's boss. 
Sergeant Trey Troney, mm -hmm. he was driving home last month to visit his folks um, for Christmas. Now, they're in Raleigh, Mississippi. He was driving through Sweetwater, Texas. Okay. And uh, he's a sergeant, awesome kid, and he saw an accident occur. So he pulled right over. And he's like, oh, man. You want to help? Uh, rips open the, the door of the damaged car, and he, he pulls out uh, the, the gentleman who, who is bleeding rather profusely. That's Jeff Unger. And uh, he's wrapping his New Orleans Saint hoodie atop his head to stop the bleeding. Right, now, right. At this point, God bless Jeff. Pressure, pressure. He, he's still coherent enough to go, uh, this is cowboy country. I don't know how I feel about you wrapping me up in his Saint hoodie. Funny. Now, so they kind of got that stabilized, but then he realized he had a bigger problem. What? That was that Jeff's, the left side of his chest wasn't rising and falling. Now, I have actually popped my rib and deflated it and broke all of my, you punctured, I mean, a my lung. punctured a lung and broke my ribs on my right. left side. So right. I know exactly how this feels. But this poor man, he said, look, uh, your lung is, I've got to go. And so he had a great uh, kit in his car because he'd done some med work. And so he went oh, back so to he his had kit. Something with him. And, I mean, this was so thorough enough that he actually had a, a needle chest compression. Oh. And he was hoping he could relieve the pressure oh. of the lung, drain it. Oh. So that he could make it work. Oh, look at me. Oh. The needle's too small. Now, if you've ever seen this, you can drown in your own blood. It's really scary. Oh. So, he and so he's take... looking around and he's freaking out. Needle's too small. He's like, holy crap, he had a pen. Okay, the tube has got to go into your lung. Mm -hmm. So he pulled out the ink strand from the pen. So oh it's gosh. just the plastic cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We and get this it. is this is awesome. He goes, I took the NCD and put it right in the hole and kind of wiggled the pen with my hand between the ribs. And you could start seeing the bubbles come out of the tip. So I said, okay, we're good. I was like, yeah. And then a state trooper arrived at that very moment and somewhat right. apprehensively passed out immediately. Asked, <laughs> try, did you just stick an ink pen into the lung of a civilian? And, oh Troy said, yeah, it was like I did. And the right. state trooper's like, he's on no pain yet. So, so I said, oh, he felt it, but he's unconscious. So fluid is coming out now. He said he passed out from the blood, it's so he's unconscious life. anyway. Minutes later, paramedics arrived, and they whisked Jeff away to the hospital. He's going to make a full recovery, but the paramedics said, you saved his life. Wow. They were really stunned that he actually even made it. Now, this is the part that makes me very sad. I guess the state trooper got Trey so freaked out about, oh, my gosh, he could sue you. He could, you know, there was a serious, you know, you could. And this is a 20-year-old Army sergeant. Right. And he's like, well, I, I and so the state trooper really life. had him scared. Well, so this is the nice thing. When Jeff finally regained consciousness and he began contacting military and government personnel, right. he wanted to praise him. And he said, thank you for what you did for me. Thank you for saving my life. Right. And he said, young man, you will always be my hero. Continue to give back to this world and the people in it. You truly will never know when you make a life-changing impact on someone. The young sergeant said it was no need to replace the hoodie. Don't worry about that. And Jeff took, oh, the, Jeff took the hint and went and got like six New Orleans Saints oh, things and sent it back to him. That is funny. And he said it wasn't anything crazy. He said he just needed an ink pen to the ribs. And fortunately, I had an ink pen. How can you not love this kid? It's like he's so matter of fact, like, well, that's not oh, going to work. What do I have? Oh, my gosh. I never, you always hear about the tracheotomy, but you never hear about ribs and lung drainage. It's pretty serious. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's move But on. isn't he an amazing kid? Yeah. I had an ink pen and he needed one. How can you not love him? <laughs> and sh okay. shivved you. Uh, so Sundance is coming up. Yep, next week. And uh, one of the complaints that has always been mm -hmm. uh, about this is that Utah, uh, Utah hens, uh, don't really get a fair shake when it comes to tickets, even though this is our our land. Yeah, so we, everyone kind of feels like you stand on the periphery and you kind of watch. Now, All there's right. some people who are pretty savvy about the ins and outs of how to get stuff. But this year, they've really, really stepped up. So basically, if you're a Utah, you can buy tickets to the film festival screenings five days before anybody else. Now, that's nice. How many okay. days? Um, five. Now, this actually started yesterday. Uh oh So from noon to 8 p.m., right. get started now, okay? Now, you can order the tickets. Um, they cost $25 each for screenings. You can purchase um, a total of 20 tickets right. um, for per screening. That's um, cool. And then all you have to do is you have to run down to one of the offices and pick up your tickets. You do have to have valid Utah ID or they won't give it to you. I have a question. But I thought that was really, really cool. I have a suggestion. Yes. Um... You know when you watch the Oscars, that what you're seeing are people winning awards of movies you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Sundance is worse. 
<laughs> so some of them are you absolutely do, spectacular. Absolutely, but you want to do maybe some research and spend some time saying, "Oh, I like that director, or I like that actor, or actress," and then go through and maybe do a little homework so that you know that you're buying tickets that something you want to, as opposed to the tomato that rots on the table. I remember when I was Documentary. a university student and I was covering the Sundance Film Festival and I would sit there in the theater and there was one about an Australian cowboy mm. in white clown makeup driving down a highway and you know he was backlit by his dashboard and it was because it's independent it was an hour of the Australian cowboy and, uh, with white face paint driving down the highway I and I still remember looking and going I'm missing some deeper meaning yeah. here but I don't think I think I that afterwards, and a lot of times the actors and the directors come out afterwards, mm -hmm. I would imagine there'd be a, a lot of questions for them. You know, that's half the fun, though, is, is their interpretation or the, the reasons they did things. And, and so that's what I wait for. And I think so also is, is that more and more well-known celebrities are doing this because it, it lets them do some more artsy things and different things that don't take six months to film, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway. It's so. Always where do they go again? So we'll have reports for that all next week so we can tell you about what's going on. Once again, go to Sundance.org, festivals, get tickets. Right. So it's, don't forget that it's Sundance.org slash festival, get tickets, and you can grab your tickets there because where are you, Todd's? All right, Todd's tidbits, and this is basically little stories that I find that really aren't worth talking about a lot, but I thought it was good. Illinois, a guy wins a lottery ticket, scratches <gasps> it up. That's so cool. Congratulations. Where? And so what he does is he plans and he goes down in the afternoon and mm -hmm. he goes to their main office because that's your, that's where you go the when, big you're, winners. when you're serious. Big winners. And then he goes in and they, he goes, okay, and it's a scratch-off ticket. He gets it. They validate it. They go, great. Here's your winnings. And he goes, oh, no. I get the big check. And they <gasps> he went, wanted the they, big check? They went, you're what? He goes, I want the big check. I, I see want it, the big check. I see it all the time. And everybody's holding the big check and everybody's like, yeah, he wins. I went. want the big check. So they took him in the other room where they take all the photos and the camera's already set up and they mm -hmm. turn the lights on. And then the lady walks out and she goes, here's your check. Is it good? And he goes, perfect. And he holds it, has some of the staff members stand behind him and he holds it up and it's a big check for $1. <laughs> <laughs> he won a dollar, and they went along with it. And I thought that was so cool. So they, they get bonus points. They must for that. have a closet full of blank big checks. You know what? I would want the big check too. I would too. Just on principle, it's like, are you kidding? It's there. All right, another tidbit for you. No, <laughs> this is so tidbit funny. Too. You can do this here. Um, uh, these kids were basically in uh, Greenboro. I think it is uh, North Dakota. Um, and they are making snowmen, and they love making snowmen. And Who they doesn't love making and they snowmen? made this big snowman, and uh, in the front yard. And uh, they went to bed uh, one night uh, thinking of thoughts of large snowmen. And all of the effort it takes to make such a lovely creature. Sure. The next day they woke up and um, basically uh, uh, tire tracks across their front yard, and someone had driven right over it. Oh man! Right. You guys, don't be a killjoy. What? <laughs> That's so, like an awesome kid thing. But they weren't going to give up. They're not quitters. They're stick to activity type people. I respect them. Go and on. So they said, We are going to build Hugh J. Snowman. Huge snowman. Okay. So once again, they constructed it and they built it. It was like 14 feet high. Wow. And they were like, Oh my gosh, it's like, look at us. Took pictures and mom and dad came out and the neighbors, and it was great. And they went to bed that night once again. A monument to a massive snowman. Dancing thoughts of large, huge snowmen. And that by the middle of the night, they heard this large crash. And they looked out, and there was a pickup truck in their front yard. I mean, on the grass. On the front yard. The same killjoy jerk. Right. One thing they had done differently this time oh. is when they built the snowman, they built it around a tree trunk that had been cut off, and it was this big around. <laughs> so they call the cops <laughs> because there's a trail of antifreeze. <laughs> That leads up to a truck that's disabled <laughs> and steaming out of the hood. And oh. uh, he drove on their lawn. He uh, he crushed dreams of small children. Well, it, it actually is trespassing and and vandalism. He crushed the stump. He crushed the stump's fine. Oh, good. Okay. 
uh, and another snowman will be built, uh, but that truck will not run for quite a while. And there will be a fine on that top of that. That makes me so happy. I, I know, don't know why it? my heart is just filled right now. This, uh, this afternoon, we came across, oh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, we came across that, uh, that, uh, that post. And who made the post? Representative Chris Stewart. Now, uh, he has been on the Capitol for, what, two years now? This is his second year? Well, he, he posted a Twitter, and essentially yes. he's in his big empty office. There is a nice big screen TV there that is on some news channel. And he's got his socked feet up, without shoes, on his completely clean desk, as if like there this. really are no papers whatsoever that need to be looked at. And he said, my brand new so-and-so socks, hashtag life is good. Now, as you can imagine, there were zero likes on this post. Because and even some of his own staffers had tweeted in reply, Congressman, you really need to take this post down. And he hasn't yet. Yeah. And there were many, many well, constituents right. from this area that were furious and made it known in the tweet. Dude, and this goes for all of our elected officials. Because if you have time to be showing off your socked feet instead of attempting to get the how many there's at least fifteen to twenty thousand federal workers here in Utah just in Utah that are looking at eviction and going to food banks and if you have time to take pictures of your socked feet and show off how adorable they are on Twitter you are all doing this completely wrong this is both left and right I don't here. care what left side of the right. aisle you're on oh at this gosh. point you all suck to me because people are uh, suffering because you guys can't get this fixed my toasty office and my new sock. Life is good. Wow. I was like, okay, hey, I'm going to stop because I'm sputtering here's now. A, here's a good example of something else. Now, um, part of the um, security of America is not being covered, and that's the U.S. Coast Guard. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard, don't know if you know this, um, work with older equipment. A lot of their cutters, the ones that rush out mm -hmm. in bad weather and save people 30 years old and older. Todd's cousin Cameron was in the Coast Guard. Yes. We've heard stories. Yeah. Um, in, in some cases, they can't be in contact with their loved ones because they don't have the technology on the ship to actually make a phone call back to the mainland. And sometimes they're out for 30 or 40 days patrolling for bad guys and for drugs and such. And as you can so, imagine, there is a massive amount of border area water-wise here along the continental United States. And they've been doing this apparently for free because they are not part of the military. They're That's, listed as office. They're listed under the Department of Homeland Security. They're water guys. So they're not even and getting. Gals. They're not even getting. No. Anything at all. GoFundMe. A GoFundMe for the U.S. Coast Guard. Now, before you go, because I know all some of these other things have been. I always question GoFundMe. Total GoFundMes. scams. Okay, so this is very clear, and I'm going to tell you what it is right at the end of this so you can go check it out for yourself. The name of it is Pay the U.S. Coast Guard During the Shutdown. Now, if you just look that up. Just go to GoFundMe and it's Pay the U.S. Coast Guard During the Shutdown. She's hoping to raise a million dollars. This has been going for a bit and she's raised like $8,000. This is a big deal. It is a big deal. This is a big deal. These people are risking their lives for free. This is why you know it's legit is that the donations go directly to PayPal Giving Fund, which goes directly to them. At, uh, it's a 501c3, 501c3, which is a legalized charity, and it goes directly and distributed to the Coast Guard uh, Mutual Assistance Fund. This is a well-established relief really fund for yeah. Coast Guard personnel and their families. It's been around for a long time, so the money goes directly to them, not to anybody else. Post that you pay. Pay. Go ahead. Pay the U.S. Coast Guard during the shutdown. GoFundMe, pay the U.S. Coast Guard during the shutdown. Light bills, heating bills, rents, whatever it takes. Medical, if the kid's got to go someplace. All of this, and it goes to the right place. I don't think go. I've ever been in a period in my life where I, where we're raising money for like the military and for I know, we usually send, we usually and, used to raise like stuff for packages with candy and then we send sweets. it over to Afghanistan and we send them or, over yeah, there. or to Iraq and now it's like I'm gonna send a package to Rhode Island because right. you don't have it. Now we're sending money for rent. So anyway, 
There, there you go. And once again, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, I think yeah. we all have the same vision is that, that, that if we have people in our country that are hurting right now, we care about them yeah. and we want to help. So that hopefully gives you a couple of ideas. We'll have another big list on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream.com if you'd like to go take a look at our website. And we'll have a whole bunch of ideas and maybe different thoughts or options that would work for you. By the way, um, and the firemen will hate me, if you're going to build a snowman, fire hydrants work too. But I can't say that because you're supposed to keep three feet cleared that around it with snow. That makes me so happy just so thinking about you it. Can't you, can't that. That. you can't do you that. that. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's such a great idea. That's so awesome. Okay. All right. So you guys have a good day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. On the you're Tundern. a horrible person. Did you do that as a child? You did, didn't you? No. We, we did something else. Back east, you used to rake all your leaves into big piles on the sides of the roads. Uh-huh. And then people would drive through them. And a big whoosh up into the air. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Except for cinder blocks. You're like, you were a horrible child. Pretty much was. <laughs> but look how well I turned out. <laughs> Kids don't do that. <laughs> what did I just tell you about? Like the kids don't do drug speech <laughs> except for it involves snowmen. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> uh, the last story is a